Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today I want to share with you the progress of the sweet corn and also the yellow squash. Things are going very well due to our high storms once again in our area. So about four days ago we had again another massive windstorm. We lost power for the day because a lot of trees came down. And then I came out and looked at my garden. You can see that the corn is pretty bit like beat up a little bit or knocked down sideways. Uh, but it actually came back to life. But what didn't work out well is this peach tree. My beautiful peach tree. It's about two and a half years old. Look at the foliage on the thing. It's just fantastic. Was looking forward to getting peaches this year. And guess what? That wind just was just too strong for that peach tree and snapped it right in half there. Still holding on. Uh, there's no way of saving that or doing else either. It didn't break off at the graph, which is about another foot down. You can see it broke pretty much at the upper half and right in half there that just snapped that so ever <laughs> nicely and it couldn't survive that windstorm. You can see at the top of the corn got a little bit beat up by the wind, but actually things are looking pretty well. And again, we had some nice rain, so it got a nice good amount of water again to make that corn nice and sweet. So here's one of the uh, short rows of squash that I planted up only 35 days ago. And it's doing immensely well. I am so proud of this. This was planted on July 5th and today's August 10th, 2019. I'm going to take a look. I do see some yellow squash in there that the bees have gotten to and has pollinated and is uh, producing fruit very nicely. This is the other side of the squash that's growing there in that row. Now, I'm going to keep still here for a second. You can see all those weeds, or what we call weeds sometimes, but also there's other beneficial cover crops in there like the uh, purslane or purslane that's growing in there. And you can see that it's not bothering this squash whatsoever. It's actually creating a habitat for all the bad bugs to stay there. And the reason why they're staying there is because they have that habitat. Now you're saying, Mark, well, you created a habitat for bad bugs, but also too, now the good bugs come in and they can feed constantly and they're there all the time eating and going after those bad bugs like squash bugs and things like that or the eggs and what that does this habitat keeps those beneficial insects there instead of having a nice clean garden it's keeping all those uh bad bugs at a certain maintenance level am i going to lose a plant or two yes uh, i might lose all of them but the thing is, I want to point out, no matter what you do, whether you want to spray neem oil on there or uh, go after and pick eggs off the leaves and all this other stuff, is that that is all good stuff and I'm not against it. But the, what the purpose is on the weeds being there is that I'm bringing in nature and nature's going to do that job for me. And again, this is only 35 days old. So if I have a problem with one crop, I'm going to plant another crop. I'm not going to plant a lot, a huge field of it, but I'm going to have also every 30 days, I'm going to plant squash up. And that's a great way to fight off your squash bugs and also your uh, vine borers. Just keep planting. What you're going to do is you're going to outplant them and you're going to have healthy plants. And also too, later in the season on these plants that we have here, and I might plant up another crop you know, very shortly again too, because the weather is changing, is that the things like the squash bugs and the vine borer, it's not their normal season to be out laying eggs anymore. So the later you keep planting, you're actually going to outplant them and then good, get good crops from all your plants because they're not going to be around anymore. They're going to migrate or they're not going to affect the garden as much because of the cooler temperatures that are going to come up in the fall. Now I see a perfect size yellow squash in there. Again, it's only been 35 days, but I have something I can eat. And let's get a really good view on that and I'll go pick it. Now, how nice is that? This is only, oops, let's get a good shot here. I'll zoom out. Look at that. Just in 35 days of planting seeds directly in the ground. 
I have this and this is going to go in my skillet for lunch and I'm going to bread it up and put some eggs and breadcrumbs on it and it's going to be delicious. Can't, looking forward to this. This is my first yellow squash of the season and again love it and it, so what we've learned is that we can plant squash in July, harvest it in August and it's just delicious and also very clean and also the perfect size to start eating it and enjoying it. So just a quick review. I want to point out the reason why the squash is doing so well and the corn doing so well because what this all is is pretty much on a raised bed that I made. Not a raised bed with walls on the sides but a raised bed that's basically just a mound that's about two feet tall uh, at the highest point and then slowly goes off on the side. But the width of the raised bed is probably at least uh, 30 feet, or probably closer to 35 feet. But yes, this way I get good drainage and those seeds can develop a great root system in this ground here. Now we'll get a little bit closer here in a little bit, but you can see that there's more blooms. And again, right in the middle of that screenshot here is that we have some weeds growing. Now looking down at the base of this plant here, there's not one plant here. I also want to bring this point out. Whenever I plant squash, and I did a couple trials over the years, is that I have one plant here, I have another one right here that's maybe a foot away, and another one over here. So I have three squash plants in a very dense, compact area. And you can see that everything is just growing nicely. I, I don't see any squash bugs or any problems or even eggs on the leaves. Now again, this might be just later in the season, but everything is looking very well. And you can see that I'm gonna have at least you know, those other flowers there, they're doing so well. And there's on this one main plant here, right there, I have at least two more or three more squash that are gonna be coming, a couple of flowers. And then there's a, another plant back here with a flower on it. And that's the one in the back. And now that's gonna have at least uh, three or four squashes on that one within the next week too. And this is the other squash plant that's on the side. Now. We've got some nice flowers, some squash you can see back there and over here, and one on the bottom. So that's another three that are going to be harvesting again within the next week or might even sooner. So now here's my next group of three seeds that I planted up. Now this one is not doing as well, but it's still maintaining its strength because again, the plant is nice and healthy and we can see here we have our little friend the vine board doing its nice nasty work on that stem. Now the stem has been pretty much uh, massacred by some squash bugs to take that outer coating off. But also you can see on the left hand side here that, that stuff that's oozing out of the stem. That's just definition of a vine board that's in there and is excreting that uh, let's say brown stuff out of the stem. Now there's really this is the bad news. There's really no way of ever preventing this from happening. You just, you can't spray it away, you can't, I've seen other people and I applaud the work that you know, other people do by putting a, uh, aluminum foil around the bottom and trying to protect the stem. But even then, that's gonna be difficult. My only thing is a question I would find out to ever stop it. Is there something that you could, let's say, make up in the kitchen that would harden like, uh, something that would like uh, be like a growing sticky paste that would be on there instead of aluminum foil. Something like, uh, let's say you can kind of protect it by, let's say, jello somehow or some other slow degrading organic material that you can place around that stem, still give it air to breathe, but would just keep out the bugs, you know, inside there. Like a protective barrier, but it would have to be at least a you know, half inch thick so they couldn't get to the main stem. So, but, my only way to do this in organic gardening is let it happen. Again, plant another seed today because you know that thing's gonna fall apart in another 30 days for sure. And in 30 days you have more squash. That's my point. The point is, is just keep planting. And if you don't have the space, you're gonna just have to make for it. And then if you do plant something, you can plant squash densely. You can plant at least three seeds within a, let's say, a. Uh, seven inch triangle in the ground and things will give you enough produce at the beginning where you, again you can go back to the other side or next to it in the future and plant another three seeds in a seven uh, inch triangle and you'll have again squash in 30 days especially in the summertime. 
So what I am going to do today, as soon as the uh, things start drying up here between the corn and the weeds, and they are weeds because most of the big weeds that are growing as tall as the corn is called pigweed, and that's something you don't wish to have, and it's starting to go to seed. So I'll first take off the uh, seed heads and get rid of them, throw them in the trash, but I will come back with a weed whacker and then go down the rows and just knock this stuff to the ground. The reason I'm doing that is because once you, and people have uh, called it chop and drop over the years, so all that material that I grew is actually gonna benefit the corn and give it a little bit more nitrogen is because I'm gonna chop and drop it now and all that green matter is just going to decay on that surface, adding to all that beautiful microbes in the ground, feeding them once again. And also too, is that this corn is feeding the soil also. It's putting all that carbon in the atmosphere that we have back in the ground and sequestering it and actually feeding the soil food web and the microbes in there. So it's time to make my lunch. I'm gonna start with my yellow squash. Cut the ends off, like so. What I have set up here in a little bit, I have my yellow squash, uh, one egg with a little bit of milk in it. I have some buckwheat pancake mix that I'm gonna coat it with. And in our pan over here, I just have a little bit of um, olive oil in there. So we're just gonna cut these in about, let's say, I don't know, about a quarter inch thick. Get a couple of them, like so. Dip them in the eggs. We're actually going to put all of them in there, like so. Make sure they're coated nicely on top and bottom. And then we're going to just take them out with our fingers here. Put them in the buckwheat mix. Just cut them ever so lightly. And they're gonna be delicious in a little bit. Doesn't take too long, only a couple of minutes. You can tell when they're nicely cooked because they're nice and soft on the inside. When you stick the fork in them to go flip them. Now I know a lot of people would do things a little bit differently, but hey, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. So, there we go. Now let's take a look over at the stove here. It doesn't take too long. The skillet's a little off even. Maybe I could wait a little bit longer. So now I know they're done because I take the fork and just gently press it inside, nice and soft. Now I use the breadcrumbs on the outside to just have a little bit of flavor. Breadcrumbs of the buckwheat, just a little extra flavor. It's delicious. Now I have my plate set up. What we're going to add to it is just a little bit more taste is some homemade salsa. Just a little bit on each. Nice flavor between the fresh garden vegetables and what I have already stored away in some canning. Lots of peppers and onions in there. Some big tomato slices. And all good. A nice delicious lunch. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again shortly with another video. And please like and subscribe and enjoy your gardening season. Thanks. Bye.